I'm Selectman Sean Askham, and welcome back to another edition of Community Conversations. Once again, I'm joined by my good friends, Selectman Mike Payne and Selectman Cheryl Cook. Additionally, we've got some uh, additional friends today, uh, Senator Kevin Whitkos and Lydia Tadone, former chairman of the Board of Education here in Simsbury and current Board of Ed member. So welcome to Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Welcome. Nice to be here. Thanks so much for coming in. Great. So uh, as, as always, uh, during this time of year, we'd like to bring folks in and talk about what's going on in our community here in Simsbury. And, Issues that are on uh, voters' minds as uh, you know we're all heading to the polls uh, in the not too distant future here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Lydia, why don't we start with you? What are you hearing out there? Well, um, what I'm hearing is actually a lot of very positive feedback. I've been doing a lot of door-to-door -door in just about every spare hour minute, and um, people have been very supportive of my candidacy in, mm -hmm. in terms of me running. But uh, what I'm also hearing maybe is disconcerting, and I know you hear also, and you probably hear also, is is uh, residents' concern about the state of state of affairs in Connecticut, mm -hmm. budget, taxes, retirement, mm -hmm. education. So these are things that uh, are echoed by by many, many residents, and, and uh, rightfully so. So these are things that... Uh, you know, also resonate with me and uh, with my husband and, and family. Absolutely. But uh, these are things that, um, you know, we will be hearing a lot more in the campaign trail. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to tell you, in my house, I have a little calendar, and it's down to number 50. There's 50 days left right? of the election. Yeah. We can't wait for this to, <laughs> this to get over with. But, you know, what a, what a great show of, uh, of democracy to be able to come out and, and vote. And I urge everybody to make sure you get out to vote because you don't have a right to complain in my opinion, if you don't go out and vote. Absolutely. Because you're not right. choosing who you want to elect yep. in office. Totally agree. Um, people are fired up yep. from the presidential election right down to the state house, And every vote matters mm -hmm. because, from my perspective, we need to make a Republican-controlled chamber in Hartford. That's the only way that we can stop one-party rule. And uh, everybody's saying they can't afford to live here anymore. If they can move out, they would. Mm -hmm. Poll after poll mm -hmm. after poll shows that people are are disenfranchised with the state of Connecticut. It's hard to do business. Nobody wants to open up a new business. Some of our major corporations are getting millions and millions of dollars from bonding or on the state credit card, and people are just upset. They just right. don't like the way mm -hmm. the state's being governed. Right. Absolutely. Uh, we have some important issues coming up on the ballot for the town. Uh, this time we have the charter questions that are going to be on the ballot, and I know the three of us have, mm -hmm. have worked hard on getting the charter issue out there. Um, but because there is a lot going on in this election, uh, we are would like to encourage people to review the questions before you get to the polls. Right. So that is um, important. we are hoping there's going to be a lot of people voting. And, you know, if you have read it ahead of time and had a chance to think about it, I think that will help the entire process. Absolutely. This, this election this fall is fundamentally about how you want to be governed, uh, in, in whether in Simsbury or in mm -hmm. Hartford, mm -hmm. and you can have a huge impact in your vote matters so much yeah. and uh, getting involved and understanding the issues the the charter revision all mm -hmm. of those questions you can yeah. actually go to the town's website to look at them right. i believe there's handouts yeah. in town hall there are uh, and yeah, there will be a mailing going out to yeah. all the residents also and they, they say all politics right. is local and in simsbury you have the opportunity <laughs> to change how you govern yourselves. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's, this is a huge election for yes. city mm -hmm. residents. Right. Very important. I think it's really critical, you both have made the points, is we have a, a, an opportunity to change how we're governed at the state level as well, which is we're That's very right. lucky to already have you there, Senator Whitkills, but we need to have uh, hopefully Representative Tadone in the, in the state <laughs> house as well so you two can work together to fight for this community. Yeah, you know, I, I've been up in, uh, thanks, Sean, up in Hartford for a number of years now, and I'd love to be able to serve with Lydia, uh, you know, Representative Hampton's there now. John's a good, a nice guy. Yep. But he's a Democrat from the, the other party. He voted against the budget, but he votes for the leadership. And he voted for Brennan Sharkey as the leader of the House of Representatives, who has instituted two of the largest tax increases in the history of state. And we can't have somebody that will choose a Democratic leader. Right. We've got to create a firewall. So we've got to elect a Republican in there to representing Simsbury to help offset, mm -hmm. you know, the governor's policies. Right. One and of the big issues that's coming up this time um, is going to have to do with education funding, and I think you know with Lydia we have someone who's who's perfectly positioned to deal with this very important issue that impacts half the population of Simsbury. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have excellent schools, and we'd like to keep it that way. And as you know, you've worked on the the board of ed for twenty years, and and this is going to be an issue. And without getting into the specifics of, of what's happening. Um, I think it's important that we should have some more balance um, and we have somebody who's experienced and knowledgeable 
on our side. Well, thank you, because um, that is absolutely one area that, um, as you've mentioned, I've, I've been on the Board of Education for 20 years, and, right. and my uh, children were raised in this system, and it is an area that uh, that I do have much experience with. And, and uh, you know, even though in, in light of the recent um, um, court ruling, and which you know now is, will be mm -hmm. hit, appealed by the state, right. but this is one um, particular area when ruling that is, is for me judge. But the effect and the impact it has is not only on the the uh, Simsbury Public School population or the town of Simsbury, but on the entire state. Exactly. Right. So that is another area that I take a, a much broader look at of the education for all for all mm -hmm. students within mm -hmm. the state. And uh, mm -hmm. everything starts at home, but it also has to broaden out to all the other districts within the state. And you've been involved on the state level yes, I have. with the uh, State Board of Ed and on the national level even yes, with yes. Um, education policy. Yes, so this which is, is great. You know, this is something that uh, as Kevin was mentioning, you know, when when we are up there and, and working together and um, and because I've been testifying over 20 years mm -hmm. before education committee have testified before you, before you when, when you sat on that committee. So I do have a good knowledge right. and a good handle right. of, of what what is um, what is necessary to have the skills mm -hmm. and the components to, to be there. And you'd say it's almost inside track knowledge of what's happening. And, and uh, this is really a very important time in, and I lose the education piece of it since that's the one area, mm -hmm. but it's a very important and crucial time for everyone to pay attention. And I certainly right. will be. I'm hoping that when that. you're elected, the two committees that you asked to serve on is education mm -hmm. and also on, on the budget writing committee, yes. because that's so important to have representation from Simsbury because a lot of folks in Hartford think, well, since we're such an affluent community, they don't need the money, let's cut them. When you know that every right. penny mm -hmm. is widely spent by the Board of yeah. Selectmen here and the Board of Finance. Mm -hmm. right. Right. I mean, we're incredibly frugal with our money, and actually this we're past up. spring we had to delay our budget referendum because we got told the state mm -hmm. may be taking 300000 away from us. Well, we didn't know where it was coming mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. So how can we, in good conscience, Put our budget forward without knowing that, mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, going back to uh, uh, electing Lydia, having the checks and balances in there, which is really what this is about, is is huge. Having to justify mm -hmm. to your spouse or at the Capitol why something is a good idea is is good and it's healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, and, go ahead. And I think in terms of when we're talking about the budget process, and mm -hmm. and uh, I'm glad you brought that uh, forward, Mike, about the recent budget referendum, because um, as a uh, as a board of ed member here, we have been putting forward responsible budgets mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. since we board of education and right. uh, for for our students. Right. So as we craft the budget and work with toward the budget toward a, a, a final final number or percentage, and working with the board of finance and board of select. To to come up with a responsible um, number and a responsible budget, and they've all been basically in the past few years under two percent, and I, I think yeah. that says much for for town of Simsbury for Board Education on a local level. That being being someone who has participated in the budget process, mm -hmm. putting forward responsible budgets, having them pass at referendum, instituting budgets. Mm -hmm is something that I know at the, st at the state level in the legislature, I do have that experience, that knowledge mm -hmm. of how to craft and work and, right. and deliver budget. And I think if Lydia is elected, then she will endorse the Republican initiative that we released last week, which said that we understand the struggles that local communities have because of not knowing, not knowing the unknown of what you're going to get from the state. So right. we said that all state budgets, at least identified municipal aid, must be uh, on our desk and voted on by May 5th of each each year. So you'll know mm -hmm. by May 5th what you can expect right. or not expect right. from the state of Connecticut. Yep. And that's a Republican initiative. I know Lydia would be right. supporting that. Mm -hmm. And it's important to have people that are behind, behind <coughs> that Republican initiative to say, you're waiting on us. And it's everything rolls mm -hmm. downhill, if you will, because you know, the old expression. And uh, we need as many people that can support something like that because that's how good decisions are made mm -hmm. with the information right in front of you. Well, that's and that's a responsible decision. Yeah, too. It yeah. is. And it, it follow up on that, I mean, that's one of the most shocking things when I watch the legislative process every year. You know, most folks don't pay attention to the amendments that come out on these bills. They look at the final bill. Mm -hmm. Well, you folks work really hard on the Republican side, especially to craft reasonable, common sense amendments. Mm -hmm. And they're voted down time and again. Simple solutions like you just you know talked about. May fifteenth, having a having an idea of what your municipal aid is. That's 
things like that get voted down, and it's just shocking, which is why I think you know there needs to be shared government down there. We need to yeah. have representation from both parties mm -hmm. to, to make good solutions. And right now, Republican ideas get shot out time and time again because we just don't have a seat at the table. That's just it's right. it's hurting everybody in this in this state in this community. So I think people lose track of the direct impact of what happens at Hartford mm -hmm. on right. our everyday lives they here do. in Simsbury. Mm -hmm. I think people tend to separate that somehow and well those are all, you know, Hartford issues and state issues and they're not gonna impact us. No. But they do. Right. And what we've seen here in Simsbury is with, with our boards and commissions is we've we're very balanced, you know, between the two parties. Uh, we all work together. Um, you know, we try to do it in a fiscally responsible manner and in a reasonable time frame and you know, we have a good result. We haven't raised taxes in Simsbury in the last three years. Right. And, and that's the result of a lot of hard work from all of the boards. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, we don't see why Hartford <laughs> can't <laughs> essentially, you know, get their act together and start start working on these problems rather than just having, you know, top down but yeah. I think it, when, uh, going back to what Kevin had mentioned before, even going door to door, and, and we were at September Fest recently in, sure. in, in the booth and, and, and talking to residents from Simsbury and outside of Simsbury. But I, but you are absolutely correct that this um, this election, again whether presidential or local, mm -hmm. has really energized the voters who mm -hmm. would not normally mm -hmm. um, be so passionate about what is going on with whether it's in D.C. Or whether it's in Hartford, or whether it's in in their hometown, you know, in Simsbury, yeah. and I mm -hmm. think this is this is the one area that, at least for me, and I think for you also, when we had these conversations, you know, September Fest and other fairs and things that we have been to, you can tell voters, um, you know, are 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 concerned, mm -hmm. and they, they do want, um, you know, to know what is going on that's going to impact their daily life. Right. So they are mm -hmm. paying attention to what is going on in Hartford. And they're and frustrated. And and very think, frustrated. That's very what frustrated. we heard at Septemberfest, you know, as people came up to the booth and told us, you know, why doesn't this work? Why can't, you know, Hartford get its act together and do something? <laughs> you know, well, that's they're, they're frustrated and they're curious or they're skeptical because yeah. if you rewound the video of the couple last nights of the General Assembly, uh, Marty Looney, who's the president pro tem of the Senate, said, we won't be raising taxes this year. Yeah. So here's a Democrat saying, we're not going to raise it this year, but watch what happens January 1 if they right. remain in power. That's why it's, I keep telling everybody, it's so important, uh, mm -hmm. I said, to, you know, to create a firewall. Mm -hmm. And either electing more mm -hmm. Republicans in the House or electing more mm -hmm. Republicans in the Senate. Because one-party rule has ruined Connecticut. Uh, under the Democratic policies for the last mm -hmm. 20 years, uh, we've just gone in the wrong direction. And you can see that we're at, on the bottom of every poll. Mm -hmm. Best place to retire, bottom. Best place to do business, bottom. Right. Uh, you know, and we suffer because of that. And it's all of the policies in Hartford. It's not the federal government. It's not the local government. We only have the state government to blame. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and there's it continues to be looming issues. I mean, they're talking about a mileage tax. So, you know, we're already getting some of the highest gas taxes and, and uh, taxes in general. And now they're going to potentially charge us to drive our cars. It's... Uh, well, Sean, you know, that, they say that, and the Democrats are out there saying, oh, it's not a good thing we shouldn't be doing. But then why would you spend $300,000 of taxpayers' money to enter into... To do a study. Do a study <laughs> and to agree to a pilot program. So right. some communities right. haven't been announced yet. Imagine if that was in Simsbury. Imagine if everybody in Simsbury, you've been chosen as the pilot town. Liddy wouldn't be supporting that. No way. No, that you, You're going to work, mm -hmm. and you're going to get charged because you drove your car to work? Mm -hmm. and drove your car home or drove your kid to the baseball right. field or right. the library or something like that. Right. Absolutely ridiculous. Right. Well, and the logic behind that is that the gas tax has gone down because people are using less gas because we've put out more efficient cars right. and we're driving less. So the reality is you're penalizing us by coming up with something to tax it more. And is, what about well, work? We aren't. The Democrats are. Well, right. I yeah, we, <laughs> and that's the thing we I want to make abundantly clear to folks, correct. you can't blame the entire General Assembly. It's whoever's in charge. <clears throat> and right now, the Democratic Party is in charge. So that's why we're trying to get more Republicans mm -hmm. elected. Right. Right. And, oh. and I think also when you talk about you know who's in charge and who's who's sitting in there making making these decisions, when you look at um, the judge's ruling on this, and, and he did you know give some very strict and very stern 
warnings to, to, to the General Assembly, that this mm -hmm. is, just did not happen overnight. This just did not happen in, in four years in, yep. in the first term or, 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 or you know, quasi through the second term of Governor Malloy. This has been happening for years before that. Right. So little by little it has come to that point where now, this particular year, and, and they were in court for, for, um, for, for several months, this is at the, at, the, at the crest of what has happened. So, mm -hmm. so it is a buildup, like everything else that you have mm -hmm. mentioned, Kevin, that at, at, the, at the tipping point, this is where we are with this piece. Absolutely. So you both got some recent endorsements, right? Yes, I did. Which is always important when we're talking in campaign season Absolutely. here. So yes. talk, talk yes. to a little bit about that so we can understand. Um, I recently received the endorsement of the uh, Independent Party, and so my name will be on the Independent line. And I also recently received the endorsement of an FIB, which is the um, National Federation of Independent Business. Sure. So I'm very, excellent. very mm -hmm. pleased very to, to announce that. Congratulations. That's excellent. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank, Good. You. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the Independent Party is the third largest uh, party in the state of Connecticut. Right. Uh, they are looking for candidates who uh, have talked about fiscal responsibility but wanting to move the, the, the state forward. So that's congratulations to that. I'm also uh, endorsed by right. the Independent yes. Party. Right. It's an organization you want to be affiliated with. You yes. should need to be mm -hmm. proud that you're doing that. Right. And as you all know, uh, a lot of you are working small businesses or associated mm -hmm. with a small business that the National Federation of Independent Businesses is the largest organization of small business owners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and over, I think, 75%, <laughs> if not close to 80%, of Simsbury's economic engine is small employers. Mm -hmm. So, again, congratulations. That, that's you. a huge Thank you. Uh, endorsement and, to be known. And, and it is important, you know, even even uh, while I was uh, attaining the, the endorsement, talking to, door, as I go going door to door and to businesses you know, here in, in Simsbury, and, and as you mentioned, Many of them are small businesses, and many are also small family businesses. And, mm -hmm. and I know, Mike, you, you are a family sure. business. And it really is important to hear. Many of them have been here for a while. Many of them are new here. Mm -hmm. And I guess the same sentiment is is that they enjoy doing business this town. They yeah. enjoy their customer base. Right. They enjoy also living here for those that, that mm -hmm. do. But sure. uh, I think the underlying question is they would like to continue to remain being a business owner right. Right. here in town. You know, that's why it's important to elect Lydia, because she wouldn't support the $15 an hour bill that is being uh, is resurfacing again mm -hmm. in the General Assembly. And it's not to pay somebody $15 an hour. What the Democrats are hoping for is the employer will pay the $1 an hour penalty, right. which will go right into the general fund, which basically is a tax, a tax. on small businesses. And I know yeah. Liddy would never support something like that. Right. Right. So it's important to just get like-minded, pro-business people in Hartford. And that's just a great point, Kevin, is there's so much more to the story when, when there's legislation that gets proposed and there's a spin in a direction. But pe people really need to make sure that they're talking to you two mm -hmm. or talking mm -hmm. to us and educating themselves on it. Because what might sound good in the Hartford Current, when you dig behind it, you really <laughs> understand yeah. the true impact. Again, do we want workers to get more? Absolutely, but you know, it's tied to a bigger economic picture. It's right. tied to other people's incomes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's part of a larger system, and we could spend a whole day talking about economics, and I would mm -hmm. love it. The rest <laughs> of you would go to sleep. Right. 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 But uh, you know, the point being is you don't just stroke a pen and, and make right. a change and not think about the consequences, and it, and it, it needs to be a well-thought-out discussion, which is why there needs to be representation from both mm -hmm. parties to mm -hmm. have that discussion. As you articulated, Sherry, mm -hmm. we make good decisions in this town because we mm -hmm. hear from each other. Lisa and I talk on, on almost a daily basis. Uh, again, we don't make decisions, but she informs me and you guys of what's going on so that we can make good decisions. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a, it's a healthy way to do business you know, uh, from a government level. So. Well, it's hard to make no. decisions when you're locked out of the room. Yes, that's right. That's the thing. time yeah. to budget time. Exactly. It's right. slam the door. Republicans will let you know when we're done, and right. you just vote on it. Yep. And then the press releases roll out, and it's all you, you know, party of this and the party. It's yeah. That's it's right. not a way. That was very disappointing for me. Right. That, that I, I refuse to believe that either party has all of the good ideas, and they mm -hmm. didn't have a single good idea to add to the mix, if you will. When we have our budget sessions. It is really invigorating to sit there and talk stuff through and hear different viewpoints, sure. different opinions. Mm -hmm. And the whole point is we're trying to get to a point where it's good for the town. Your job at the Capitol will be good for Connecticut and Simsbury, not either one exclusively. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. And on a positive note, in Simsbury, we've been opening a lot of small businesses lately, yeah. which is yeah. great. Yeah. And um, I know a lot of us have been attending these openings. And I think, um, to your point, Lydia, what could sort of get lost in the mix is that a lot of these business owners that we're meeting now, and, and 
we're very fortunate to have so many new businesses in town, but they own the business. It's not that they're just an employee who's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, these are pe- these are owners, and a lot of them are spending, you know, mm-hmm. seven days a week. As you know, Kevin, you know, or a small business, you know, it's not just how much you pay, have to pay your employees. It's, you know, how much is your rent? How much are your, till, you know, right. how much are your property taxes? All those things. And all the paperwork. That, all the paperwork. And, 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 and licensing and all the things that go You know, you just put yeah. more and more burdens on those those right. business owners. And, and for them, you know, when you raise the income tax, you know, most of that mm-hmm. income is coming right through. That's not. That's right. That's not a tax on an employee. That's the tax on the owner. And and these guys are, are just going day to day. And, you know, we love supporting them. You know, we have lots of new restaurants and little right. shops, and, and it, it's wonderful. And, and you know, also along that line, when you when you talk about uh, the, the um, business owners in, in town, whether the restaurants or shops mm-hmm. or what have you, but in talking with them also, you know, they, they're they here because they have an investment in this community, in right. this town. They live here, their children are, are schools right. here, they shop, they dine, they they, mm-hmm. they uh, spend money here. So that is the other piece about it. It's not just someone that is here and leaving at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. We see them We see mm-hmm. them in the stores, we see them at the fields, we see them in the schools. And right. that's another piece about it, mm-hmm. that they are committed as an investment, as a business owner, but also mm-hmm. as a family or as someone living here. Many and, of them and, live here in town. Absolutely. And going back to the the um, you know the, the fifteen dollar an hour and, and and as you had mentioned you know it's it's not one size fits all well, it, and we could also use that same you know analogy with education it's not one size fits all right. you know we were right. we are a, a state of one hundred and sixty nine uh, municipalities one hundred and sixty one school districts so again equating it it's not one size fits all in the education um, field in the education mm-hmm. process or the education funding mm-hmm. but it also can equate to when you're looking at small businesses and and wages you know such as mm-hmm. the fifteen dollar an hour you know what goes on in other parts of the country what may benefit other parts of the country is very very different than what is beneficial for us here in connecticut right exactly Absolutely. all right so what do you guys have planned uh, coming up more events getting out and meeting more people Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> My tear off calendar says 50 days left. So, <laughs> I was say, have you seen yeah. your wife in a week or so? <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, we'll, I think we'll both be at right. the fly in right. Sunday. Right. It was, right. The day was changed, so that mm-hmm. was good for right. me. So, I could, I'll be able to attend that. Yeah. And then just going out, being available. You know, right. we, we have no problems catching us in the grocery store, mm-hmm. on, on the, the field, rails and trails, wherever we, are. wherever we are. Feel free to come and ask. You know, uh, my website is kevinwhitcoast.com. And Lydia's website. Lydia, to, Lydia to Don at uh, gmail.com. So a great way to look right. at the, what we believe are the important issues facing our state, mm-hmm. what we plan to do uh, next session, and how to reach out and contact us, whether you want a lawn sign, you want to volunteer for our campaigns, or just reach out and ask a personal question that yep. you may not want to ask face-to-face, but you want a written response. We'd be more than happy to, to mm-hmm. answer those as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, that sounds great. All right. So what other, uh, what other topics are on our mind today? What else, uh, what else are we thinking about? <laughs> well, um, I want to thank our uh, Community for Care members for putting yes. on an excellent program uh, last week at the library. Um, we had a, a doctor from Farmington come and talk about um, development and mental health issues um, in children. And um, thanks to all the volunteers at SCTV, uh, the program will be available um, on SCTV's website. Um, I encourage you all to look at it. Um, it has a lot of great tips um, just for, for dealing with kids, for recognizing um, signs, symptoms, and more importantly, resources. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that this, this doctor is involved in, um, a group in Farmington that um, monitors legislative development um, with regard to uh, mental health in Connecticut. And it's a very precarious balance right now. And, you know, a lot of people looking for services, a lot of... Um, it's a jigsaw puzzle of services, and a lot of people don't understand it, don't know where to go first. It de- sort of depends where you go into the system. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they tried to make this a little easier for people to understand. And uh, he's got some good charts and, and um, in the program that you'll see online um, just to give people a sense of where you're going with this. You know, where do you go when you first have a problem? Who do you talk to? You know, then what happens? You know. What happens with your insurance? What other benefits are available? That type of stuff. It's it's big questions, and, and a lot of people are afraid to talk about it, particularly with their children. They don't want that stigma attached to them. Hmm. 
and their kids, and um, this is a good way to, to understand the process more fully. I think that's one of the areas that we're focusing on for the next legislative session is to find efficiencies to make sure there's not redundancy right. in duplicative mm -hmm. efforts because so many mm -hmm. agencies are doing just little bits and thing. pieces, but there's the, no, no right. one person or organization mm -hmm. is responsible for overseeing all of that. So it kind of enables the pass the buck Yep. System so things don't get resolved because everybody says, "Well, I thought they were doing it," and it goes, "I thought they were doing it." So uh, we're looking at reshifting responsibilities at the state level mm -hmm. to make sure that if you're the commissioner, you're responsible. Period. Right. And the buck stops with them, as mm -hmm. Harry Truman once said. The buck stops here. So uh, it's one of the, that's a great point, though. It's also well, called it's, efficient government, right? right. It's also government and it, by it, efficiency. And unfortunately, that that burden falls on people when they're at their most vulnerable. You know, right. when you're mm -hmm. in a crisis, you know, if you have a kid who's um, an opioid, opioid addiction, or um, is having a mental health crisis, or has attempted suicide, you don't want to deal with 500 bureaucrats. You know, like, oh no, you have to go to yeah, you know, to this form no, and this you place, have yeah. to go to DMR. You know you have to do this. And you, you can't do it with that, you know, when you're in a family mm -hmm. crisis. Um, so this helps a lot. And, um, you know, 211 is a great system. I mm -hmm. think it needs more publicity. It needs to be um, better integrated into that whole service provider system. But, um, you know, we've made a start. a little bit more about what, so 211 is what? Um, 211 is um, the mental health sort of version of 911. Yep. It's, um, it's always answered by a live person. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have, uh, say there's a suicide you know, discussion going on, maybe not, if there's an attempt, you dial 911. Don't mm -hmm. hesitate. But if you have a child who is you know, talking, about it. talking about it, showing signs and symptoms, you know, withdrawn, uh, withdrawing from their friends, having um, other issues at school, um, you will get a live person on 211, and they can, within 48 hours, well, actually, within 24 hours, someone will show up at your door. Um, if you need somebody quicker if than that. If you want them to, right? If they you want just, them to. They don't just show up. Um, so. It can be even quicker than that yep. um, for a response. Um, they can help you, again, depending on what your, your level of need is, um, direct you to the appropriate agency to, to get further assistance. Yeah. So that's really important that we get more information. It's kind of an info line. They, yep. they right. not only cover that, but a ton of different topics. Right. So once of, you tell them what right. you're, you're but interested in. But you have to is, go zero they, in they, on exactly. the emergency yeah. mental health. They start, uh, yeah. right. I just, I, re, yeah. I did know what it was. I wouldn't, right. you know, I yeah. thought you could better articulate it No, the it emergency could, mental yeah. health piece <laughs> is very <laughs> important. Um, <laughs> right. And it's actually getting much better. It Good. used to be, um, you know, a little vague and, oh, you know, we can't help you now. But now that they actually have a live response and somebody who will show up at your door. Good. Excellent. I happen to know somebody that, that called that, mm -hmm. and they asked them if they needed immediate right. someone there who would be there within the hour. And they said, no, we can wait till the morning, and they were there like eight hours later. Exactly. Yeah, right. I mean, that you get, there's somebody, wonderful. a real person you can talk to. Right. I'm glad you mentioned that. I well, said on before the board, we keep going, sack. I just want to, just, we got to, unfortunately, we're just about oh. out of time. I apologize. <laughs> oh. um, I know <laughs> there's lots more. Going. Perhaps we could have another edition here, but I just want to thank, uh, thank both Senator Whitkos and Lydia for being thank here you. today. Well, and obviously my good friends, Cheryl and, and yeah. Mike. It's a pleasure being here. So it's always good, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, maybe another time here where we can have a dedicated time to talk about some of these mental health issues. So thanks so much for joining us on Community Conversations, and We'll talk to you next time. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.